so you could have completely avoided that problem if you just made everything explicit make your intent explicit in the graph so for me it's explicitness is this think, what you call an implicit key yeah we, we call this an implicit key so you you define a key field that is not a key field in the subgraph that it's defined but it's a key field in another subgraph so there's another subgraph that has a key directive that references that same field it's just then in that particular subgraph that is the source that's making the jump it is not a key it's just a key in another graph and we call that okay. an implicit key and if i'm on the receiving end of the jump and i have this implicit key and i remove it is that a composition error or what will happen you can't be at receiving end with the implicit key you need to have explicit key to be able to accept jumps mm -hmm. so the the target so when i say target yeah, that, I mean, that's what i mean i mean the target yeah so the, the target has the key directive and the key mm -hmm. directive has a field set and the field set references one or a number of different fields you cannot remove those fields because then it doesn't satisfy the field set defined in that graph what you can do is from the source graph that doesn't have the key directive you could just simply remove that and you're at the mercy of um the composition internal satisfiability graph telling you okay if you remove this we can no longer jump from a to b and that makes such and such a thing impossible there's a chance that um there's a chance that you don't actually need that jump. But another consequence is that while you don't need that jump, you might have changed a single A to B into a bunch of leapfrogging where you've had to go from A to C to D to E to F to G to H, et cetera, to get to where you actually want to be, which is say subgraph B. And um, this is what you guys call Lego brick keys.